World Cup as we get into our first race weekend for bobsleigh in the BMW IBSF World Cup season. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Whistler, where winter is gradually approaching. But if you ever wondered what a bobsled track would sound like in Scotland, this is probably it. The sound of gentle rain proceeding at the women's monobob race. I'm Martin Haven. Delighted to have with me Canadian slider Chris Spring, who knows this track inside out. And Chris, whatever you're driving, whatever the weather, this place is one where drivers just take that little breath before they go off the top, right? Exactly. You have to be switched on here when you're at the track. And you notice that when the start house is silent, you can hear a pin drop in that start house here. So let's take a look at this point of view. Obviously, getting off the top as fast as possible is extremely important. Cynthia Appiah with the start record 5 3 6 done earlier this year at the North America's Cup race. As you see here in corner two, extremely steep grade here, and then it flattens off quite a lot here in three here in the Omega series of corners really important to keep that speed going all the way down into corner six here where you can actually take two lines a very high line near the roof or a lower flatter line we've seen a few sleds here come out of seven with a few problems earlier this week as they transition into nine ten and into this difficult corner 11 where you see these huge pressures pick the sled up here into Hokies 50 50 corner that's where we'll see a little bit of action today. Coming down here at the finish line, we're reaching speeds of over 140 kilometers an hour as we cross the finish line. And obviously you see here the track record there by Olympic champion Kaylee Humphreys. Well, again, although she's now sliding for the USA, she knows this track intimately. In fact, Kaylee first raced here as a brake woman back in 2000 and nine so she's been coming here a while she's definitely one of the most knowledgeable drivers on tour and these monobobs they're, they're a very different prospect aren't they it, nominally they're kind of about a four-fifth size two-person sled but with only half the weight in and so they're really kind of skittish and they were new these sleds to the to the drivers and to the to the engineers last season so everybody's still kind of feeling their way around how to get the best out of them yeah and even though the athletes have had a couple years now to get a good feel for the sled it does take time and i was fortunate enough a couple weeks ago to actually get to drive one of these sleds i had about five or six runs and my very first run down the track, I got to the top and the athletes were like, how was that? And I said, I wasn't driving the sled, the sled was <laughs> driving me. So it was very difficult to keep these things under control. It definitely is. Well, we've got a fairly small field at the start of this Olympic quad for all sorts of reasons. Cost of living, drivers retiring, a whole bunch of young athletes already on the North America's Cup and racing over in Europe as well. But Bianca Ribi for Canada makes her monobob world cup debut she is first off and we have our olympic and world champions in the field as well first led on ice race one of the women's monobob world cup canada's bianca Ribi, 26 years old one world cup start as a driver of a bod sled in altenburg 2019 that, that was on the brakes with Alicia Rissling. She heads off into the rain. Martin Haven and Chris Spring watching the racing with you. Yeah, solid start here from Bianca as well. 5.62 and a beautiful exit of one there. Straight parallel into two. She's going to be really happy with the start of this run. She's had a couple of two-man wins, a couple of monobob wins as well. 13 monobob races under her belt. She raced in North America with these sleds last season. And that's that knowledge advantage, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And she's coming into this race with a lot of confidence. She had a great North America's Cup ser series, uh, winning the two women race in both North America's Cup. And she's putting down a fabulous run here for the first heat of this race. Yeah, NAC raced here a couple of weeks ago with all the disciplines. They're currently in Park City. That's where the World Cup heads to next week. And then we follow NAC over to Lake Placid in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, that was a great run. Look at that top speed to 140 wow. kilometers an hour. And especially in these conditions, this is going to be a difficult time to beat. She's put down a fantastic run here. And she made that look really controlled as well. Does, does the track, does the grippiness of the track change when it's wet? Do the runners have a little bit more purchase or, or does it just lubricate the track and, and make it harder? I would say in these conditions, because it is quite warm today, the track is going to be a lot grippier. This, the ice will be a lot softer, and so we're going to have a little bit more purchase or a little bit more uh, 
contact time on those runners. So, you know, runner selection, how we're steering down the track, it's all very important, dependent on the conditions here. And I think Bianca's done a great job here for a very first World Cup start yeah. as a pilot. Absolutely. I mean, the lines here are really nice, very little skidding. And, and, and that, I think... That's the athletes, but also the teams really starting to now get their heads around what these sleds need to be more controllable. Well, next up is Switzerland's Melanie Hassler, 24 years old, 11 monobob races. She had a win in Koenigsee last season. And she's raced in the monos and in the two-seat sled that she'll be racing tomorrow in the NAC here a couple of weeks ago. Chris Woolley as ever at the beginning of the sled. Loading is, is a kind of mixed bag. Some athletes run in, some, and you saw Mary there, vault into the sled. Yeah, perfect load, and look at that velocity as well coming into this first curve with a great start time, 5-5-6. Five, five, so she's got this advantage already at the top of the track. And let's see if she can put down some nice lines on the way down. You can see she's tied exactly with Bianca Ribi now. Her clock is in the red, that means she's behind. If it's green, she's back in front. So she's losing time to her Canadian rival. Melanie's been here for a few weeks already. She came before the NAC race, so she's had a little bit of time on the track to get used to the, the way that the track is, the personality of the track, and we're seeing the benefits of that here with these beautiful lines down the track. And of course, because of the World Champs in 2019 and COVID, the, the two years after that, we haven't had a World Cup race here since 2017. So it's been a long while since we really got any mileage on this Whistler track. And as a result, there's a lot of young athletes who have never been here. Melanie was one of those. And yeah, not the sort of place you just turn up and go, right, let's have a look at this. OK, I've got it. Yeah, exactly. The athletes want to want to get comfortable here. And we've seen that with uh, some of the Europeans when they've come over here in the last uh, week, just getting that comfort level on the track. And you see Melanie here taking this high line that I talked about in six, actually just hitting the roof a little bit too high there. And, uh, you know, we've seen that a little bit in her downtime there too. And again, she tapped all the way along the wall here. Each one of those little bumps just takes a bit more speed out of the sled. Yeah, and the mono is just so nervous on the track, you know, it, it, it wants to skid, it wants to be unstable, and, and those pilots in there the whole time, they're wrestling with it, just trying to keep that thing straight the whole way down the track. Next up, 25-year-old Kim Kalicki. This is Kim's first time here yep. at the Whistler Sliding Center, first time on the track, uh, was earlier this week. Coming out, uh, actually it was last week they, the Germans yep. arrived for a little bit of pay training ahead of the World Cup here. and uh, Which is really vital because when you don't know the track, you only get six training runs and she's got to split those between monobob and the two-seat sled. So, you know, if you don't know the track, you are really having to learn fast. So let's see what she's got. We know that she can drive a two-seat sled. She's only had eight monobob races, though, in her career so far. Steps in and then hops into the seat. 5.56, same start as Melanie Hassler. A yeah, big skid there out of corner one, two, and that's just showing a little bit of the inexperience that she has here on the track. But as we know, the Germans are a powerhouse in the sport, and it doesn't take them long to figure out the track with the, the coaching that they have and the confidence that they build from all the training and the sliding that they've done throughout their careers. She has some pretty good coaches and pretty good teammates to draw from. Only 2700 back here at the midway point of the track too, and she's putting down a pretty good run, especially with that skid at the top of the track. Everybody thinks that a skid at high speed is is really going to hurt your time. If, if you make a mistake in the last couple of corners, it really does. But it's mistakes early on that you can never recover from. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully she's put that one behind her on the way down the track and focused on the rest of the track, which it looks like she's done. She put down a great run there, especially for is probably her sixth or seventh trip in a monobob down this track. Yeah. Again, she's sitting quite far forward. That Traditionally in a two-seat sled, the driver's helmet will be right at the front of the cow, but we saw over, over the last 12 months, 18 months, drivers moving further back to kind of get a bit more weight on the rear axle to prevent things like that happening. Yeah, exactly. And I think they're still figuring out where is the best place to be sitting in this sled because there is so much... Uh, so much opportunity to move throughout the sled yeah. and what is going to be best. And I'm sure each track has its own personality and they're moving sleds, they're moving positions in the sled 
to accommodate for that. World Cup debut for this young lady, 25-year-old Marine. This is Riley Compton from the USA, raced here in the North America's Cup. Came into the sport via softball, and the connection there in Team USA, of course, is Alana Myers-Taylor. Say hi to Alana and husband Nick. They're expecting their second baby, so we won't see her competing this season. But, uh, Riley Compton, five monobob races, best of which was third place in Park City last year. So she only started in the sport a couple of years ago, and suddenly, boom, on the starting block in a World Cup race here in Whistler. Yeah, let's see what she can put together here at the start of the track. I mean, we always know that the Americans have great facilities down there. They're always pushing great, so see what Riley can put together here, especially coming off that North America's Cup. 5.83, a little bit behind here at the start, but we know that she has been here for a few weeks already and can put down a great run here to catch up to the rest of the field. Ooh, a little late there, and a, and a flop leads to the skid, half a second back. A bit of a lower line there through four, and see how she's pushed away in five. And now she's just kind of catching up to the sled and trying to get in front of the sled. She'll have time to do that here in corner seven. I, I bet you can probably still remember what you felt like in your first ever World Cup start with lights, cameras, and all these sort of big names around you. I'm sure she's feeling a bit of that as well. Oh, yeah, of course. It's uh, It can be overwhelming at times. Oh! <laughs> Good save there on the exit of 13 there. Uh, she had a couple of good saves on the way down already. And look at the speed at the bottom. 140 was the fastest. Still still within seven kilometers now of the fastest speed, despite all of that drama. And that's the funny thing about this track is, you know, if you're driving a race car and you make all those mistakes, mistakes your speed just disappears. When you're coming down an ice track, it keeps accelerating you despite all those errors, and the top speed is so close to what a, a perfect run is still doing. Well, there you go, kind of a wild ride for Riley Compton, but well, the, uh, the small field means that she's guaranteed a second heat. Plenty of chance to tidy things up. Yeah, and she's just gaining a lot of confidence here. Like you said, first ever World Cup start, and for, for most people, that's going to be very overwhelming. I remember, like you said, what it was like for my first World Cup start. It was in Chisana in Italy there. And, you know, having all the cameras on you and wanting to put your best foot forward and, and start that World Cup debut with, a, with an amazing result. It's not as easy as it seems, right? Yeah. So. I, bet, I bet she didn't sleep too well last night. And not just for, for the time zone. So next up is Lisa Bookwitz, 28-year-old Olympic gold medalist from 2018. As a brake woman, she was also on the brakes for Kim Kaliki in Beijing in February. For the last two or three years, though, she has also been learning to drive. So now she finds herself with the retirement of Mariama Yamanka. Wow, look at that yeah. start time. Five, four, three. We always knew it was going to be a great start time. You know, if you're an Olympic champion as a brake woman, yeah. then you're going to be moving that power to the front seat. We're going to have a great start time in here in the mono, Bob. We're going to see the big starters coming from former break women. So Lisa is one of those. Katie Humphreys. Ooh. <laughs> Working really hard there in six. Definitely didn't need to work that hard to achieve that line. And we saw earlier here in the week Lisa having some interesting lines coming out of seven there. Very lucky not to have crashed earlier in a training week. Yeah, she was clearly trying to keep the nose down in six, wasn't she? And the tail was having none of it. Nice smooth lines down at the bottom, though. This is going to leave a fourth ahead of Riley Compton. So 9,500s back. We're going to see bigger gaps in the field because of a relative lack of experience for some of the sliders, but also because these this is a bit more like skeleton than bobsled. It's a little bit less precise still. Yeah, because we don't have the weight in the sled as well, any mistakes are going to compound down the track, just like you were saying in Skeleton. So the skid that she had out of uh, seven there in the straightaway, or the aggressive turning that she did in six, these are really going to impact her time down the track. And unlike the four-man sled where we have so much weight behind us, those skids don't really impact us as much. We see here uh, she's skidding up into six. It's kind of like driving a car on, a, on an icy road, you know, you get the nose tucked in and the back's still trying to go straight and there you go, big smile from Lisa Bookwitz. She didn't have quite the worries in seven that she did before. 
Now then, here's a woman who knows not only how to drive a sled down this track, but everywhere else. Olympic and world monobob champion Kaylee Humphreys, among her many other uh, Olympic gold medals. Uh, 13 monobob races in the last couple of seasons, seven gold medals. And of course, that Olympic gold in February, world championship gold in Altenburg in 2021. Started her career as a brake woman. She's always been one of the most powerful drivers pushing a sled. In fact, finding a brake woman to keep up with an athlete like her is always a, a tough ask. Yeah, we've seen in, as you know, Kaylee gets older, obviously it's going to be more difficult to keep up with these younger athletes here, but still pushing very competitive times, 5-5-0 five, five, off the top here. And, you know, her skills as a pilot are unparalleled here by the rest of the field. And we saw that at the Olympic Games there in Beijing, where she just took away from the field, put on a clinic, really, with how well she drove down the track. And we're seeing that again here today. She's going to be looking for a strong finish here today. Ooh, it's an unusual mistake there for Kaylee, falling out of the exit of seven. Still in the green here, but now just falling back. The track doesn't have the sheen on it that it did yesterday. It's frosting up a little bit as well. And of course, she didn't drive these monos yesterday. The last training run was the day before, so the track has changed. And the, the first heat is always where you find out what the track is like today rather than what you expected from it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, with the track being a little bit warmer today, with the rain coming down, the track is going to deteriorate a little bit faster as well. And perhaps we're seeing that now with the already six sleds down and yeah. a few to go. Well, she's second to Bianca Ribi by 56 hundreds, but that big skid is what really drags speed out of the sled. A couple of little errors. And then one really low. I think we're going to see it here. Yeah, she, she's very late, just holds it up on the corner too long, right? Yeah, and that high line coming around seven without pressure, the sled's just going to fall out of the corner. And then obviously here she's in a skid, but corrects it really well and gets back on track. And I think that's why Kaylee has been so successful over her years, yeah. is that that mistake that she has, if she does make a mistake in the track, that's put behind her and she's straight back to work and showing us why she's been so successful over these years. Yeah. All that experience comes home to help you when you need it most. Cynthia Appiah next up for Canada, former break woman for Kaylee Humphreys, third in the World Series last year. And the 32-year-old former break woman, 20 monobob races, including a dozen podiums. And she won here in the North America's Cup mono races just a couple of weeks ago. And Cynthia, you know, part of her advantage is she's still got that big power start, but she is definitely getting the hang of driving these and the two-seat sleds. Yeah, we're going to see a fantastic start here. I'm sure she's gunning for her own start record. 5-4-0, so just four hundredths off of the start record, but definitely gives her that huge advantage. And a perfect exit of one here is going to continue that velocity down the track through this kind of flatter section of the track here. And we see that with 28 hundredths up now, building on that lead. Well, the real tragedy for Canada is the loss of the track uh, in Calgary, but it does mean that all kind of off-season driving in Canada is on this track, and that, that kind of helps with that advantage. Yeah, you see she uh, had a bit of a skid there out of seven, so she's going to fall back here in the red. Just a matter of time when, and now you're going to see that here with ooh, a little bit early into 13, getting pushed away, has to haul it off, but manages it quite well here and just doesn't have the top speed, but she's going to be, I believe, in second place here across the line, 44 hundreds back. So Canada 1-2 right now, definitely good showing here for the home team. Kelly Humphreys pushed down to third place. Bianca Reby still leading from Cynthia Appiah. Kaylee's in third, Melanie Hassler is still in fourth, just six hundreds behind Kaylee Humphreys. Then Kim Kalicki in fifth spot ahead of her teammate, Lisa Bukvitz. So seven of our nine sleds down. One more from the USA. And then our Olympic champion, Lara Nolte. Yeah, and the beauty of having a two-run race here or at the Olympics, a four-run race, is it, it is about consistency. And we'll see here in the second heat, there's going to be a little bit of chopping and changing, especially with the, uh, the track being a little bit more equaled out, too, with the conditions. So we'll see a little bit of changing in the order and an opportunity for drivers that are perhaps a little bit 
further back or had a disappointing first round to move up in the order. Well, the thing that happens, if you have a big skid, as we saw from a couple of them, if you eradicate that, then suddenly you've got a lot more speed. And that's, you know, then, yeah, your rivals are just as likely to make mistakes as you are. Nicole Vogt next up for the USA, 35 years of age, 14 monobob races, including six podiums. She's been racing on this track for a good decade. Occasional appearances in the World Cup for Team USA. She should be a full season standout racer this year. A little bit off the pace here at the start, but she's going to try and benefit from her smooth lines down the track. And that was a great exit of one. And she's putting together a good top section of the track here straight parallel out of two and three nice exit there for early height into five so she's having a great section here so many tracks and the olympic track in beijing was no different you know the first two or three corners you can just completely ruin your run yeah, and it's really important to to set that up or to set the tone for the rest of the run here and get yourself in a good mindset she comes here a little bit of a tap exit oh she's pushed away there oh. <laughs> There's a lot of ice on, on some of these corners that is a little bit different in feel to last time. You know, even with that small mistake there, she's going to be happy with this run. I know she's in sixth place, only 8,900 back, and it is close there for third right now. Yep. You know, right now she's only 3,300 back from Kaylee, from, you know, who is Olympic champion in this event. So she's going to be pretty happy with, the, with that run yep. and with the position that she's in. You definitely mark yourself against your teammates as well as all your rivals, don't you? you? You need to know where you are in the pecking order. So a few things to tidy up. Yeah, as you see here, she's coming out of 12, and she has this tiny little tap, but that's going to push her late into 13. You see it here again, and she has to work hard to get the slide on and off of the corner. And does a great job at there, just under Stephen Holcomb, the late Stephen Holcomb's 50-50 sign that he so classically coined here during the Olympics. <laughs> All right, final sled in the first of our two heats for the Women's Bob World Cup. That women's Monobob World Cup will be our Olympic champion, Lauren Alter. There's Nicole Vogt at the bottom, Lauren Alter at the top. Uh, 24th birthday was two days ago. She's our Olympic two-seat Bob champion and 2016 youth olympic champion now that was in a different kind of monobob that didn't have the articulation that these do but since her beginnings in the sport she's been used to driving on her own as well as with a push one yeah a very solid start there wow look at that yeah. five wow. four three just three hundreds off of the best start today cynthia apia and some beautiful lines here at the top of the track she's hoping to not just be competitive here at the top of the field, but she wants to come away with this first heat in the lead. And, you know, we saw at the Olympic Games just, uh, what's that, nine months ago now, she was fourth in the Monobob event. Whoa. But uh, definitely had some amazing runs there, some of the fastest runs at certain times, but it just goes to show that consistency is key. She's putting down still a very competitive run here. Look at this, 1900s up. Yeah, still in the green despite that big mistake. So clearly they found a, a good setup in these sleds for the German athletes. It's going to be close here at the line. Oh, 100th in the lead. Wow, that is close. And with some mistakes down the track as well. So she yeah. has some work to do to clean that up, to try and extend that going into the second heat here. But definitely her advantage was her start time over the rest of the field here or yeah. over over Bianca who was ahead of her leading into this first heat. She always looks like she's kind of surprised that it went so well, Laura Nolte. She's, she's still, yeah, almost like a rookie even three or four years into her World Cup career. See that she's getting a lot of pressure there at the exit of seven with a skid. Kind of gets lucky with the taps here that straightens her up a little bit, doesn't scrub off too much speed. And then again, back into nine, ten, and back to business. Yeah, she's got a remarkable ability to, to put it behind her and kind of laugh it off, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. And that was a good run from Laura Nolter. Our Olympic bobsleigh champion leads the field after the first of two heats here at the Whistler Sliding Center. First ever race in Monobob as a World Cup discipline rather than a World Series. 
It is Lara Nolte who leads by the smallest margin that we measure, one hundredth of a second, over Bianca Ribi from Canada, Cynthia Appia in third, and Kelly Humphreys in fourth place, the Olympic and World Monobob champion, just a few hundreds back. Look how close Kelly is to a medal. And in anything else, six tenths might be a, a long reach for the top step of the podium. But with these monobobs, you can gain more and give away more than that on one run. So there is the way the field lines up. Lauren Alter will go out last in the second heat as we go in reverse order of their first heat performance, which means that rookie Riley Compton will be first out of the star shed. Our second heat will be, I wrote it down, Sam, and I've lost a piece of paper at... Uh, hey, good to be back racing. <laughs> in just under an hour's time. So join Chris Spring, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew here in Whistler as we bring you all of the action from Heat 2 and hand out our first medals of the season for the women's monobob. Don't forget, the uh, two-man race is coming up this afternoon as well. That's at 14.30 local, 17.30 Eastern, 22.30 GMT. Wherever you are around the world, morning, afternoon, evening, or good grief, is it really that dark outside? Join us for all the action this weekend. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you in just about an hour from now.